straight to quarters. All right, the gun. Stand by this tower battery. One broadside into it, if you please, Captain Bush. Pointers on target. Blinks not ready. Aye, aye, sir. Ready. Fire. Michael Redgrave as C.S. Forrester's indomitable man of the sea, Horatio Hornblower. Something about the bustle of preparation for a new voyage that makes all such days memorable as one looks back on them after a space of years. But one particular late autumn day comes back to me with living clarity, for, for it was the first time I set eyes on my old friend William Bush. A meeting which, as things turned out, had lifelong consequence for both of us. The old renown, Captain Sawyer commanding, lay at anchor in Spithead, completing for sea. As luck would have it, I was officer of the watch when the new lieutenant reported aboard. Lieutenant Bush reported aboard, sir. Here are my orders. Pleased to have you aboard, sir. My name is Hornblower. Have you got your gear with you? My sea chest forward, yes, by the larboard hatchway. Good. I'll see that it's sent to your quarters, sir. Mr. Hobbs, lay out here immediately. Were you speaking to me, sir? Mr. Hobbs, that powder's got to get aboard before nightfall, and you know it. And don't use that tone of voice when replying to an order. If you sulk, how are you going to get your men to work? Well, I only want yes, to... That'll do, Mr. Hobbs. Now, please get back forward and see to it. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> I'm not quite as fierce as I sound, Mr. Bush. But if once they start sulking, no ship can maintain discipline. Mr. Hobbs is about the worst of the lot. Acting gunner and no earthly good at it. Favorite of the captain, I'm afraid, and therefore very... <clears throat> well, of course, I have no right to pass along ship's gossip. Of course, I rather wish you would. Man can't help feeling a stranger in a new berth. <clears throat> no, no, I can't hold with any breach of discipline, Mr. Bush. I was wrong even to mention it. Boston's mates! Side boys! Aye, sir! Aye, sir! Captain's gig approaching, men! Aye, aye, sir! That young midshipman seems a little nervous. A young well you mean? Oh, he's a nice lad, barely 16. That's the captain's a trifle, <clears throat> well, inconsiderate of midshipmen. All hands! Attention! Careful, Mr. Bush, the captain's coming on board. Mr. Hornblow, and who is this officer? Our new third lieutenant, sir. Lieutenant William Bush. Bush? Bush? Oh, yes, I see. Came aboard in my absence, did you, Mr. Bush? Why, yes, sir. I, uh, as Mr. Hornblow has just explained... Hello. Who told you I was on shore, eh? Well, no one, sir. I didn't even know you were ashore till Mr. Hornblow informed me. So you and Mr. Hornblow know each other already, do you? Well, no, sir. I, I merely reported to him when I came aboard. So that you and he could have a few private words together without my knowledge. Oh, no, sir. Of course not. I merely... That'll do. I'll have you know I allow no one to conspire behind my back, Mr... Uh, Mr. Bush. You may report to me in my cabin in an hour. I say, old uh, What's up with him? Careful. He's as likely as not to pop straight back up that companionway. He always hopes to catch us discussing him. Tell me, is he quite sane? I... I hope so, Mr. Bush. We have a long voyage, as I said. I begin to feel it may seem very long, Mr. Hornblower. 
If I'd realized... Mr. Willard. Aye, sir. Bring two hands at once and see to Mr. Bush's seat chest, please. Look lively now. Lieutenant Bush found me puzzling, even cold and forbidding that first day. But ever since my first year as a midshipman, I'd had drilled into me the sternest sense of an officer's duty, his obligations to his captain. The Renown was certainly not a happy ship, far from it, but I felt that Bush must find out for himself how things stood. It wasn't long before he did, unfortunately. We'd only been at sea two days when he came looking for me. Mr. Hornblower. Oh, good morning, Mr. Bush. You sleep well? Possibly. I... Well, you won't approve of what I'm going to say, but... I've been talking with young Wellard. Is it possible the captain treats his midshipmen so brutally? I could scarcely Perhaps believe... young Wellard that... talks too much. No, no, I assure you, I'm the guilty one. He shared a watch with me last night. I made him talk. Midshipmen are impressionable, young scamps. Surely you've remembered that from your early years. The stock complaints, the... Well, of course, but I never had a captain who indulged himself in such caprices or such malice. Mr. Bush, you and I are hardly in a position to judge what... Nonsense. I... I'm talking to you because you're the first man I met aboard this ship. And because... Well, because I hope we'll be friends. Friendships aren't entered into casually on this ship, Mr. Bush. Like it or not, I'm going to speak my mind. Doesn't anyone, not even Butland, feel as I do? Doesn't anyone consider Captain Sawyer a... Uh, a brutal tyrant? Um, what would any of us do about it, if by any chance we did, Mr. Bush? Confound it, Hornblower. It isn't even Navy justice. A Navy justice can be very blind sometimes. At least a delegation of officers could call on him. Ask him to temper some of these cruelties he inflicts on his midshipmen. Mm, you haven't been aboard long, have you, sir? Do you know what would happen to that delegation you suggest? Within two minutes, every officer in it would be put on watch and watch till further orders. Four hours on duty, four hours off, day and night, around the clock. No, no, Mr. Bush, we, we need our sleep too much. Mm, I suppose so. Young Willard seems, well, very much impressed by you, if I may say so. No, Willard's a nice boy, but Mr. I... Mr. Hornblower. Oh, Mr. Willard. Mr. Buckland's compliments, sir. And will you and Mr. Bush join him below on the gun deck? Practice drill in running out gun carriages, he says, sir. Oh, it's a good idea, don't you think so, Mr. Bush? Our gun crews need some exercise. They've been too long in port. Well, what's that you've got there, Mr. Wellard? Oh, I, I took the liberty of stopping by your quarters, Mr. Hornblower. Just brought up your old uniform coat. I noticed you were wearing your new uniform today. Well, that work down there is going to be hot and dirty. I thought you might want to change. Yes, I never asked you. Uh, oh, all right. Uh, all right, Mr. Wellard. Very considerate of you, I'm sure. Give me my coat. Oh, and go and tell Mr. Buckland we'll be with him immediately. Would it be well, sir, if first I just reminded the men of accidents? In my last trip, I remember the wheels of a 24-pounder came unleashed. Nearly killed two men before we made it fast. We've had experiences of our own with runaway guns, eh, Hornblower? We have, sir. But repetition does no harm. By all means, warn the men again. Yes, sir. Attention now, all hands. You can expect some warm work today, men. Before we roll a wheel or untie a single gun carriage, remember this. A loose cannon can be a dangerous thing. I advise you never to leave a gun without some tackle fastening yeah, it to What's going on here, yeah, Mr. Buckton? Why, uh, uh, a gun practice, sir. I received your permission, sir, if you'll recall. And Mr. Hobbs, our acting gunner. What of him? He's only this instant arrived down here with me. Mr. Hobbs, were you or were you not informed of this exercise? I was not informed, sir. Indeed, I wasn't. It was as much a surprise to me as it was to you, sir. Well, please, sir, I expect it was mostly my fault. I, I looked for Mr. Hobbs when Mr. Buckland announced the drill. I looked from everywhere in the ship. That'll do. Sir, may I make a request? What is that? That you hear the midshipman out, sir. I feel certain that Mr. Wellard can explain Thank that. you, Mr. Hornblower. I don't require any explanation. You may be sure I've taken note of your insubordination, Mr. Wellard. Mr. Wellard, I believe, knows about beatings from past experience. Hey, eh, Mr. Hobbs? <laughs> I may perhaps let him off one on this occasion, but the next time there's any sign of disobedience, Mr. Wellard, beware!
As His Majesty's ship Renown drove south under reefed topsails, the heavy seas of the Atlantic rose majestically to meet us. But discipline dropped lower every day. Want to take in another reef, Mr. Bush? With your permission, sir. Hmm, yes. Oh, very good, Mr. Bush. Turn out both watches. Aye, aye, sir. Bosun! Aye, aye, sir. Call all hands. Aye, aye, sir. And have you nothing better to do than to stand there merely watching, Mr. Hornblower? I'm sorry, sir. I was only waiting till my men reached their station amidship, sir. All hands to reef topsails. All hands. Now man those halyards and reef tackles. Be quick about it. I think they're ready to haul now, sir. Yes, Mr. Bush, I have eyes. Hold on those reef tackles, men. Let's be lively. Buzz trolling there! Buzz trolling! What's that? Those men at the mainmast have ceased trolling, Mr. Bush. Yes, sir. Something's wrong, apparently. They're in the waist. Who's that countermanding my orders? It's me, sir. Wellard. Wellard again. Come here, Mr. Wellard. Come here this instant. Yes, sir. How dare you issue an order without my permission? Sir, I, I assure you, sir, it was quite necessary. Several do, Mr. Willard. You'll be sorry for this young man. Mr. Willard was merely doing his duty, sir. He was the first to notice what had happened. There's a reef point caught in the reef tackle block, weather side. If the men had continued to haul, the sail would have been torn. That doesn't in the least excuse Mr. Willard's act. No, but sir, if the sail had been damaged... Thank so... you, Mr. Hornblower. There's no need for you to intervene between myself and a junior officer. It's useless to try to protect Mr. Willard this time. Useless, Mr. Hornblower. This is my station, sir. I'm responsible for it. Kindly stand aside, Mr. Hornblower. And you too, Mr. Wellard. I'll deal with you in a few minutes. Do you hear me? Stand aside! I'll have no conspiracy aboard my ship. Aye, aye, sir. Stand aside with me, Mr. Wellard. <laughs> Trust? Oh, yes, sir. As you see. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. Quite beautiful, too. Mounted with silver. Ringed every few inches by a large joint, I notice. <laughs> have you observed Mr. Hobbs's beautiful cane, Mr. Willard? I, I have, sir. Pick the two sturdiest of your mates, Mr. Hobbs. This young gentleman may need pinning down. Then take him into the main cabin there, under the poop. And see to it that justice is executing. But Captain Sawyer... Silence, Mr. Hornblower! Are you ready, Mr. Hobbs? I'm ready, sir. Take him away. I saw a cruel smile on the captain's face as the rest of us waited on the quarterdeck. But if he hoped to hear a scream or cry from Wellard, he was disappointed. A quarter of an hour passed. The captain went to his cabin. And at last... Wellard came back again, walking stiffly, his face white and set and strained. There was compassion in Bush's eyes as the boy saluted him. I began to like Bush better from that moment. A savage business, Hornblower. That poor lad's been badly used. Oh, Captain Sawyer, sir, I, I didn't see you. Wind's still freshening, sir. So I observe. Well, well, Mr. Wellard at work, is he? Yes, sir. Checking on our glasses. Possibly Mr. Wellard has learned better than to conspire against his captain, lawfully set over him by His Majesty King George. You make no reply, Mr. Wellard. Oh, Mr. Hornblower still here, too. Mr. Wellard seems to be sulking, Mr. Hornblower. I don't think so, sir. He probably didn't know what to say, sir. Well, perhaps Mr. Wellard's mind is dwelling on what lies behind him. Behind him, yes. <laughs> Rather good, eh? Mr. Willard? Yes, sir. Mr. Hobbs's cane did its work well, but possibly not well enough. We'll see. Sir, wind's coming off. Do you think perhaps another reef... Don't interrupt me, Mr. Bush. Tell me the truth, Mr. Willard. You sought to hold me up to derision before the hands, did you not? Oh, no, sir. Indeed not, sir. You and Mr. Hornblower together. 
you plotted and you planned so that my lawful authority should be set at naught no, sir. to make a figure of fun to undermine my influence with the crew. Confess, Mr. Wellard, confess. No, sir, I didn't, sir. I swear it. Then who was it planned to catch that reef point in the reef tackle block? No one, sir, no one. Who countermanded my orders? Who put me to shame before both watches with every hand on deck? It was a deep-laid plot. Answer me, Mr. Woodard, or do you pretend to be so busy with that slate because you know your guilt? Sir, I gave Mr. Woodard orders to test the glasses. That's all he's... Thank you, doing. Mr. Bush. I'll handle this. We'll get the truth out of this young conspirator yet. Mr. Holmes! Aye, aye, sir. Lay off, sir, Mr. Holmes! Aye, aye, sir. Mr. Hornblower, sir. All right, Mr. Woodard. Sir, you don't mean that you intend... Not again, sir. From now on, Mr. Hornblower... Consider yourself on watch and watch, around the clock, till further orders. Aye, sir. Ah, here you are, Mr. Hawks. Take Mr. Willard in charge again, and summon your mates. We'll have him punished on death this time, up for a dare at the mainmast. I'll have a confession out of him, or I... I... I'll have it out of you, or you'll jump overboard, Mr. Willard. Take him in charge, Mr. Hobbs. Aye, aye, sir. I think I'll come with you this time to see that my orders are properly executed. Oh, no, we can't, Mr. Bush. Remember, man, Captain's orders. Where are you going? Never mind. Don't ask, and you'll never need to know. <laughs> Captain Sawyer, sir. The gun is loose. What? Where? Below on the gun deck, sir. Do you hear it, sir? Bumping and plunging, too, in this here sea. I came as fast as yes, I could. Yes, I hear it, too. Mr. Hobbs, put down that cane. Get below. Aye, aye, sir. Call the off-watch. Bring our hammocks. Now, hurry, you're acting gunner, aren't you, Mr. Hobbs? Mr. Hornblower, you're back. Yes, Mr. Bush. They, uh, have they finally secured the gun? Oh, yes, I think so. Why? I, well, I was only thinking. A lucky accident for young Wellard, wasn't it? Hobbs hadn't laid on many cane strokes before he had to run below. Mm. Yes, I, uh, I noticed that. And once young Wellard got out from underfoot, he appears to have been forgotten in the commotion. At least for the time being. At least for the time being. Mm, most peculiar happening. Still, accident or not, a heart beat somewhere in that gun. What do you mean? A heart that was averse to a boy's suffering. Oh. I find it's better not to ask too many questions in this life, Hornblower. All the same, I wonder where you went to when you left this quarter deck. Do you, Bush? Well, we are friends, aren't we, Bush? Uh, yes, it's, it's better not to ask too many questions, even of a friend. <laughs> Horatio Hornblower, starring Michael Redgrave, is based on the novels by C.S. Forrester. Music composed and conducted by Sidney Torch. Produced by Harry Allen Towers.